Welcome back to the show where we want to be here. Yes. I think we do want to be there. It's not a have to. It's a want, right? I think it's definitely more of a want than a have yeah. to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never dread meeting. No, I never dread do. talking and, no. and taping. No. You know what is a have to for me is doing taxes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Talk about that complex trauma. <laughs> I have to tell the story now. I have to. So I do my own taxes. I use TurboTax. My dad is an accountant, so I grew up with, you know, a lot of shame around that. But thank God for TurboTax. So last year I did our taxes, just like we do every other year. Went through all the questions. It always works really well. And then about two months ago, we get a letter from the IRS saying, geez, you had all this money that wasn't on your tax return. And I'm like, what the hell? And it was from my counseling business, which is always on there. There's no way that could happen. There's no way, there's no way. So I pull up the old return and I'm looking where normally it asks those questions and inserts it. And I remember answering the questions for that part of it. It wasn't in there. It was just wasn't in there. So like, I'm like, it, part of me was like freaked out because I'm like something I did wrong. But I, I, I know I answered those questions. So I'm, and I found some solace and I'm like, they must have answered the questions and then it didn't save or something, which totally sucked because we had to send a ton of money to the IRS that we hadn't paid before. But it is this sort of, yeah, have to, right? Like death and taxes, those are the two things you can't control, right? But this have to, you can have some want to's and have to's mixed in together, but why are we talking about this today, right? The have to's are things like, you know, um, I'm not a nudist. If I were, then I could leave my house without clothes on. But we could say, you know, it's a have to to wear clothing in front of other people. Uh, sort of societally sanctioned. It's illegal not to if you're outside your house. A want to might be like, oh, I'm wearing, you know, a, a particular sweater that I like or whatever. There are a lot of want, a have tos about work, right? Seems like I have more have tos yeah. in work than I do in my personal life versus a yeah. want to. Yeah. And I think um, uh, while we're, because it's the Neural Marvels podcast, if we talk about this in, in terms of neurodivergence, I think you come up against a lot of this in terms of the, the judgment of behavior from neurotypicals. You see it a lot with kids where the parents are like, they, they have to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, and how do you navigate that which is necessary that to get what you want? You may have to have a lot of... I, to study in school, where it's a lot of have tos to get what I wanted, which was really good grades. Um, and who's instilling that? Who's saying you have to do that? And so the social aspect of it, I think it's really hard because someone may not want to go to a party, but they feel like they have to. So they start to negate their own needs. We can throw another word in there. And yeah. then they get exhausted or whatever. So it's like, where does the where does the one end and the other begin? A have to versus a want versus a need versus a like a price you pay for any of those kinds of things or whatever. But I can remember my therapist making this differentiation. I was saying have to, have to, have to. And she would say, is it a have or is it a want? And then, of course, I wanted to, you know. Strangle her? Be really mad oh. at that. I'm like, yeah. oh. What the hell was that? They're different. No, they're different. She explained yeah. the difference to me, and I'm like, oh, why is why is it important to delineate the difference? Are you giving away your power to somebody else? Are you allowing them to dominate in that way? Because if you have choice in it, you know, we've talked so much in this podcast about when you're in childhood, a lot of that power you don't have. Yeah. But if it's something you really don't want to do. Then you have choice and now you get to start trying to change the system. Like, I'm not going to go to that party because I don't want to expose myself to all that noise and small talk and all that kind of stuff that I don't enjoy. That could have an implication on, you know, my friendships or my relationship or whatever. But then you also are able to talk about it more and give context and so on. 
but there's so many, there's a line in the movie Parenthood. It's a million years old with Steve Martin's in it. It's a very good movie. It's like from the eighties. I apologize for dating myself, but the, there's a part in the story where Steve Martin's wife gets pregnant again now with their fourth kid. It was unplanned. And she's telling him about this. He had just quit his job. And she's like, can you get your job back? And he's trying to get packed up together to go coach Little League because he just he's coaching his kids' Little League team. And then she says, why are you leaving? Can't we talk about this? Because she's found out she's pregnant again. And he's like, no, I have to go coach Little League. And then she goes, do you have to or do you want to? And he says, my whole life is have to. And I was like, it's, I still remember that line because it was like, oh, my God. There's so many of us that live our whole lives in terms of like what you're supposed to do, what you have to do, what is necessary. Most of us would like to not have to work and still have money to support ourselves, but we can't do that. But yeah. where is the line with some of these um, uh, more subtle things around do you have to or do you want to? And then the last piece, and then I'll shut up and let you talk some too, is that that want piece, I think we get tamp down about it because your want is a kind of vulnerable i can i feel it like deep in my stomach even when i say the word want mm. there's this i have to get this thing and maybe i have to rely on somebody else to get it and that's a vulnerable thing and to even say i want this thing now you have the the propensity for someone to kind of crush you by denying that to you or you can't have it for whatever there, there could be barriers to it so that can feel icky you know I want my, I wanted my dog to live longer, but she didn't. And that's yeah. painful. So there's all those delineations around why it's important to talk about the difference between want and need and have to, and some of these other phrases that we use around that. Yeah. My, yeah. Yeah. It's a big stuff. And my mind goes to obligation. Yeah. There's this yeah. other category of, I have to, I'm obligated to. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. And I think that there's some, you know, it may be some different cultural or religious, yeah, um, yeah. maybe kinds of values or systems that get set up for people um, where I can't say no. I can't refuse. I can't opt out of that. Um, yeah. You know, I see this also when I'm supporting parents. Um, and mind you, their kids are adults, but mm -hmm. their parents mm -hmm. nonetheless – and they say, no, 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 no. They they have they have to have friends. No, they yeah. have to have a job. No, they have mm -hmm. to, you know, shower every day yeah. in this way. No, they have to mm -hmm. look this way because life is hard already. No, they have to lose weight because, you know, like it's yeah. all of these pieces. Um and um you know, I it 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 this is so complex because it gets wrapped into what people are deeply anxious about, deeply yeah. care about, are worried about. Um I was gonna say you know, fear even when you were saying that, what yeah. your parents would say, I was feeling the fear. Yeah. Yeah. And so to uncover those things, you mm -hmm. know, and that, you know, there is nothing that is guaranteed and nothing I mean you you, yeah. you said death and taxes. But um you know, <laughs> outside of those things, there just aren't guarantees. Yeah. We aren't in control of all the variables. Actually, we're in control of very little. Yeah. Um, and as therapists, we are often doing the, what can you control? Let's focus on those things. Let's let mm -hmm. the things go that are outside of your control. There is nothing we can do about yeah. that, right? Um, and that is really hard to do. That is not yeah. like an easy thing. And I can see why it's part of a 12-step program. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the first steps are about, you know, learning the difference of what you can and cannot control, right? Yeah. 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 Right. And realizing and it's like, there's I think a lot that's outside of your control. Yeah. So much. Right. And so um, I, I'm often I feel like I'm often in this position of challenging. Mm. Yeah. And when I mean challenging, I don't mean to for that to sound so um, aggressive, actually. It, it's it's, yeah. you know, just more of like, let's shine a light on this. Let's let's nurture this one. You know, let, yeah. let's let's take a look at this one a little bit more closely and why yeah. is there an attachment yeah 
to this particular thing. That's a really good point because it's not always logical. I think about um, yeah. people that have a fear of flying, which they don't. It's a fear of falling, but that aside, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not logical. So I can talk with people that have a fear of flying. And it, there's a reason citing statistics around the number of deaths per flight versus right. you have a way higher uh, percentage of getting dying in your own car when you're driving mm -hmm. way yeah. higher. Um, so, and well, so why doesn't that work when you're explaining that to people? Cause it's that control thing, right? It's a, well, I'm driving versus the pilot and I have to let go of control for this thing. So it's really, is that sort of letting go of control, but if you don't get into those edges, you never get into efficacy. So I can have someone say to me, <clears throat> oh, I, I want my laundry to be done. Right. Which don't we all. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Folded. For my More about folded, for, like yeah. done or and folded. folded. Yeah. <clears throat> Whatever it is. Yeah. For my laundry to be done, I have to do it. There's no, or, I mean, mm. I suppose I could say, what are, what other options are there? If I have money, I could say, I'm going to pay someone to do it, which most of us mm. don't have. Right. Mm. Mm -mm. So if, if what you were saying is if you, if you confront, you know, it's not meant to be adversarial, but if you confront that basic idea of you want the laundry done and put away, you're the only person in the house. How else would this happen? And then, oh, well, I, you know, I have to do it. Yeah, you kind of do. If you want it done, you have to do it. And then you can try to break down the steps to get there because maybe there's executive functioning issues or there's, mm -hmm. uh, there's energy issues and all kinds of stuff that can get in the way. And then we can even dis disarticulate that and say, how much longer do you have and do you need to create that much laundry? Are there ways around that, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. um, like if I wear a sweater <clears throat> on a day to see clients, I wore this sweater yesterday, but it's over a shirt and I didn't wear it all day. So I wore it again, I didn't wash it in between. That's yeah. logical. <clears throat> so there, there are always ways to get into the, the want and need, but it's, so, it's this larger insurmountable thing or it feels insurmountable. And then the can't, can't is another one that used to piss me off that my client, my therapist would say, is it you can't or you won't? And then I'd be like, oh God, there we are again, you know, cause it's true. <laughs> it's, is it that I can't or is it that I won't? And then you get into like that demand avoidance thing that we've talked about before, which really yeah. is about control. I have no control. So I'm going to choose not to do this, yeah. but it is important for me to say, I won't do it rather than I can't, because if I say I won't now it's my decision. Yep. And I'm the one in control, which is why people say I will not fly somewhere. Now they're in control, right? Yeah. Yeah. Logic aside, all the logic out the window. So you're going to drive 10 hours through six mountain passes in the rain and the snow instead. <laughs> I hope you survived, you know, so it's not logical, right? Um, but breaking it down to those steps and finding places where you can empower someone. And the reality is, life is full of a lot of have tos life is full of yeah. a lot of um uh don't want to's but you kind of have to yeah. yeah yep and you know i think you know dana when you say it's not that i can't it's that i won't mm -hmm. what immediately happens there is that means that I also take the responsibility yes. and the accountability yeah. of this choice. That's right. That's right. And I think that is what can be such a turnoff for people. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be responsible. I, 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 what, do you, what do you mean? Um, and, you oh know, um, it brings up something like for me where uh, this happens a lot to my non speaking clients um, mm. who struggle with language expression, but obviously have a lot of thoughts about the world and mm -hmm. and um when their motor systems allow them they can type and and mm -hmm. write and things but um for whatever reason for these clients you know i keep saying to these teams and families respect the no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i don't know why we don't respect the no mm -hmm. like the, the, if someone said to you verbally i don't want to do that yeah. It makes me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It hurts me. Yeah. You would say, oh my gosh. I hope you would say, oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Like, let's figure out a workaround for that. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. well, like, let's talk about that. 
Yeah. But for whatever reason, oh no, they're just being willfully disobedient. Mm. So we don't respect the no, which then leads to things like aggression and violence yeah. because yeah. it's the only thing I have left mm. to say, oh my God, I, like I, I'm telling you, yeah. no. Yeah. And for whatever reason, we do this with children. We do this with with, yeah. oh, with you're supposed you know, to get over it. Don't be neurotic. Just my, like my wife doesn't like elevators and oftentimes avoids them and takes stairs. Yeah. It's not affecting okay. her life in a way that's problematic right now. So, so what? But we're like, oh my God, you shouldn't have a fear of elevators. What's wrong with you? You should confront that. I'll tell my students that. I'm like, you're a psychologist. Haven't you conditioned her out of that? And I'm like, it's not my place. Why? Yeah. It's not. If she lived on the 30th floor of a building. Yeah and wasn't able-bodied and couldn't get upstairs. But, you know, we stayed at a hotel back in November that had seven floors. We felt so fit by the end of those four days. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, if anything, you guys are like, you know- We're like a challenge. Are- we're gonna close our rings on our watch because we're gonna go yeah. up and down seven flights of stairs four times the day. And we were like, yeah. And she's like, that's yeah. so cool that you're seeing this as a challenge. I'm like, why not? If it was 30 floors, I may have taken the elevator. <laughs> you right, know, but- and I might've taken the elevator and said, hey, you know, babe, I'll meet you up top. Like. That's right. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But those aren't the things to die. Like that's not the hill to die on yeah. in my yeah. mind. And so, you know, even with um, some of my families, I'll say, you know, maybe, maybe some of the frameworks to use, or is it against, you know, the, the, the legality, morality, health and safety mm. kinds of aspects, yeah. you know, is this against the law? Is this against like mm. someone's moral code or moral compass? Is this unsafe for this person? Yeah. You know, if it's not any of those things, can we allow Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that to happen. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, um, you know, why, why do we know better? I, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, you know, I, and these can anyway. be little things that you maybe think the pharmacy I go to, when you come out of the building, there's like this, there's a sidewalk and then there's kind of like this really steep hill that's sketchy that clearly people aren't supposed to walk on. There's like gravel on there. It's like this four foot kind of steep gravel and then onto the street. And to, to have to go all the way to one side or the other to get to the parking lot, it's kind of a pain. Right. So I can look at that and say, clearly you're not supposed to walk on that, right? Yeah. Previous learning has told me that if I walk on a hill that steep when there's gravel on it, I'm going to hurt myself. You could slip. Yeah. So every time I see that, I'm like, oh, I want to cut. I just want to cut. I, I tried to cut going up a couple times and I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. I started <laughs> to slip, but it was sort of like something like that. Like, okay, you maybe think of that with the moral thing. Like, oh, don't walk where you're not supposed to walk. Like these big silly things. Like the sign says, keep off the grass and you're walking on the grass. Right. Don't, it can feel so silly, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm going to go all the way around because if I fall at this age with all the other stuff I have, this could really be a problem, right? <laughs> Whereas yeah. maybe when I was 12, I wouldn't have heard anybody just pounding down the hill and it's not going right. to hurt right. So that, that reminds me of what you're talking about. Like, is it illegal? No. Is it is it immoral? No. Is it going to hurt somebody? Well, I could hurt myself. <laughs> yes. So I never thought about the it hurt did. myself when I'm like, that totally popped into my head. I'm like, yeah, I could hurt myself. And I realized why I always walk around now. It sort of always bugs me like, damn it, I wish they put something on there where we could take the shortcut. That's yeah. why I don't take the shortcut. It's yeah. not illegal. It's not immoral, but I can hurt myself. But great. Right, there's that kind of health yeah. and safety kind of yeah. issue there. And, yeah. Yeah. and I, you know, and I, I think that that does give parents sometimes more freedom or more permissions yeah. to yeah. let things go. Yeah. It's yeah. okay that we want to watch anime at three in the morning, but we are yeah. able to sleep and get our things done. I don't know. Like, yeah. wait, what is it? I, you know, I don't know. Like, what, what, how, how are we kind of thinking about these things? And, um, you know, it, it, so really, really pulling apart, teasing apart, you know, want mm-hmm. to, have to, have should. To. I mean, like, ha, like what? Yep. Don't Can, want to, don't want to. Can I, yeah. what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. This is why therapists get into the weeds in terms of semantics we because it. they we mean different it. things and then they frame yeah. things differently and that affords all kinds of change. Yeah. We we love it. I mean, I, I think this is when I think about why I became a psychologist and I knew very mm. early on that I wanted to be a psychologist. Mm. Um you know, th- this is one of those things. I mean, uh, you know, 
uh, is the ability to play with these thoughts, to follow this line of thinking in order mm. for it to bring insights and elaboration and openness mm -hmm. to living, you yeah. know, um, it's really thrilling for me. I love, I mean, it's, it's really yeah. fun. I, I love being able to do that. And I love that it's a part of my job. And so, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, don't, don't give us, I mean, we'll either tell, if you ask us a question, we'll tell you it depends because it yeah. always depends on the context. Uh, and the, yeah. and the other is that we will inevitably be analyzing language. Yeah. Because of what we talk about. Yeah. We've done that a lot on this podcast, even uh, disarticulating yeah. what things mean and to try to point out the nuances of the, of those different things. Yeah. Yes. It, oh, it, there is always nuance and there's always complexity. Mm -hmm. It's never as simple as mm -hmm. you think it is. Yeah. And even the silly example I gave about that hill by my pharmacy is you're talking, I'm aware of another layer, which is, oh, I'm having to confront the fact that I'm to an age that if I have a fall, yeah. it's going to be a problem. And it then that's, be serious. Like, oh, yeah. that's a bigger, larger piece that I'm like, I just want to run down the hill because it's that piece is harder and, and a yeah. developmental curve that I'm dealing with right now. Right. So, yeah, so. it's your own transition. Right. And like mm -hmm. this kind of like real radical acceptance in yeah. like yeah. where you are. Um, right. And that's not a good or a bad thing. It's just where yeah. you are. Yeah, you like and it, but it's where no. I am. Yeah. Oftentimes yeah. we don't like it. I mean, oftentimes mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I realized on vacation that I rarely smiled with my mouth open. Oh. <laughs> and um, and it's because like uh, wrinkles galore, you know? Oh, I, I mean, I look man. at those pictures and I'm like, wow, I am looking old, you know? Oh, and, and, you know, yes. and I realize that or I don't like the way this looks or I don't yeah. ever, I, you know, it's a, this very self-judging kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I realized like, oh, I have stopped smiling with my mouth open in pictures. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. Isn't that something? It's, it's that We place. all think we're going to avoid those things and then we all oh, get no. there. And we're like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. People that were telling me this 10 years ago. There it is. No, or people are like, I can't believe that she got a, like a, a plastic surgery and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you just let yourself age. And I'm not there mm -hmm. yet, but I'm like, oh, I can really empathize. I can see where you could get there. I, I can <laughs> I can really, I can really see why you did that. You know, like um yeah, totally. so you know, it's just it like where yeah. from where you're standing. Yeah, you don't know, judge the where. lest you be in the same pond. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Unless you be in the same ever flowing toilet yeah. circling. <laughs> I know. I remember one of my instructors using the example of the toilet flushing. I guess it's just stuck with me. Yeah. Hey, Dana, what do you think about our new logo being just our Bitmoji faces going down the toilet? Circling would, the rain. Just right? circling. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be funny? It would be, it'd be, it'd be hilarious. Yeah. It would be. I mean, it would be funny to you and me because yeah. we can laugh at ourselves in this way. <laughs> but can you imagine if someone like we went to a conference like here's our here's our here's our business card. Oh, I happen to be on this podcast with Dana Waters and here's our logo and it's just our Bitmoji faces heading down a train. <laughs> handing out cards at APA with their little head faces circling the drain. Oh my god. This is this is for neurodiversity awareness and acceptance. Here's <laughs> that's right, we're in April. Here it is. Oh, yes, we I are can't. in April. Uh, I can't. Okay. Oh god, that made my well, uh, yeah. Will everyone be good to you from yeah, signing off from Dana and I, from Dana and I circling time. down the drain? <laughs> <laughs>